what's up guys so today is another planty of the week um i kind of forgot last week's video um but it's okay now this week we are going to go over pothos or i believe it's emprim i'm gonna put the name here and i'm also going to include the skindapsis variety or the skindapsis family i should say um just because they're so commonly mixed up and for good reason i mean their care requirements are dang near the same um they look pretty similar a lot of them so it just makes sense to just put them together i mean even nurseries will confuse them because if i make two separate videos honestly it would be the exact same content <laughs> exact same advice uh just a different plant so i decided this is going to be a two-part episode kind of sort of um this is going to be the actual care and requirements, like the normal planty of the week. And then the next episode is just going to be me showing different varieties of Skindapsis and Pothos and just kind of going over all of them so you can see the differences and just showing all my plants. I mean, why wouldn't I want to make a video just talking about them? So <laughs> uh, that will be the next video. So before I talk too much, let's get into the actual planty of the week video. Let's start off with pothos in general. So this is a plant or a family that covers a lot of different plants within it. Um, as you can see, they can look very different. Here's one right here. Here's one. Here's another. They take on very many shapes and colors and variegations. But for the most part, the care among all these are pretty much the same. Uh, very slightly kind of so starting off with watering so no plant likes to be overwatered of course uh definitely goes with this plant as well they for the most part do not really like to they really do prefer their soil to dry out a bit more of course if you have it somewhere where it gets a decent amount of sunlight or somewhere where it gets a lot of sunlight it's going to need a little bit more uh, watering so it depends on the type of soil you have it in if it's in a very well draining soil you might need to water it a bit more, especially if that's combined with really high sun exposure, so keep that in mind. But watering, definitely wait until at least the first few inches. And some varieties tend to let you know when they need to be watered. For example, this Scandapsis exotica does especially does not like to be overwatered. Um, it prefers to be pretty much dried out completely before watering and the leaves actually will curl in like little tacos like this and that means that it's thirsty this one is another variety of the skindapsis the argarius or something like that i'll put the name in because again i don't remember but as you can see some of the leaves are starting to curl in and the pot feels pretty dry so i would say i need to water if you're unsure wait till more of the leaves curl up it's like this exotica I wait until almost every leaf on there is curled up. I find that just works best for me. Now for pothos, at least the varieties that I've had experience with, their leaves don't so much curl up like that, like the Scandapsis varieties. Um, it'll, instead the plant will just get very droopy. It'll all start hanging low, just look very sad. You can find a photo, I'll put a photo in of what it, they look like, but you'll clearly be able to see because the foliage is just hanging very, very sadly. So. Um, that means it is thirsty. So if you prefer to wait till then, that's what I normally do. I wait till I see some of the foliage hanging down, looking a little droopy. Then I water because the plant is literally telling me like, hey bro, I'm thirsty. Now sunlight. This These plants are super cool because they range from low light and I would dare say almost no light as long as it's getting artificial light to high light and you can train them to direct sun or full sun outside just keep that in mind that you have to work your way up to it if it's only ever been inside but these plants make great house plants make great beginner plants or great plants for those that live somewhere where they don't really have a lot of windows you just might not see as crazy growth or you might see the variegation like if you have an enjoy with lower light the variegation will kind of start to fade away the leaves might have more green than white on them but that is totally fine and that also brings me to if you have variegated plants, like you have a manjula, you have an enjoy, even this marble here that has variegation 
will show differences depending on the sunlight as well as I have a big snow queen back there or I think she's a, it's a snow queen I don't know and in case you didn't know by variegation I just mean the pattern that the white or it can be cream yellowy sometimes it's pink in certain plants um, the pattern it creates rather than it just being an all green leaf even in the scandapsis variety there's the silver that's variegation and with more sunlight you're gonna get more variegation or more consistent variegation put out on each leaf. But at the end of the day, you can really get away with putting these plants anywhere. You can put them in an eastern, southern, northern, western window, and they're gonna do great. Um, keep in mind that if they were somewhere before where they were getting very low light and you just throw them in a southern window, they might get a little burnt. This Enjoy, I had it before somewhere where it was getting very low light and I moved it right in front of my I think it's an eastern window so it gets very bright morning sun and midday sun like very bright for the most part so it got a little burnt because it wasn't used to that sunlight yet um, and then once the plant acclimated it was totally fine like you can see this new growth it was about up to here when I put it at the window hence these leaves are burnt a little bit and then this new growth no burnt leaves because the plant already acclimated if you don't want to risk burning any of your foliage kind of do it a little slower than i did like just move it closer and closer each day so it kind of gets used to it you'll be way less likely to burn foliage i didn't really care i'm kind of impatient so i just threw it at the window i knew it was going to be fine but with some of these varieties that are a little bit more finicky you might not want to do that so the moonlights they are a little bit finicky when it comes to moving them around and stuff. So if I were, was planning on moving these somewhere where they're gonna get a lot more light than they were before, I would definitely take the slow route. Also because these are harder to find, sometimes expensive plants. So I would be more cautious with these. Much like a lot of other types of plants, the more sunlight also could mean you get fenestrations or fenestrations on your leaves. Of course, a moss pole is gonna help that, but with more sunlight, it's gonna help them mature to that level. I don't know if this guy will ever get there. I mean, I'm hoping, but the leaves are getting significantly bigger on this Cebu Blue, but still, no fenestrations yet. Now we're gonna go into propagating. So these are so easy to propagate. You can do multiple ways. You can do water propping, you can do uh, moss or you can do just straight into soil um, you can even air layer however you want I usually just stick to water propping and I have a whole video on that so I'm not gonna get too into detail with it but all you really need to do is find a, a node chop right under it stick that into water you got the water every so often so it's not nasty and you will have props going and then once they get a decent amount of roots on them you can either keep them in water they can totally live in water as well or as long as they're getting some form of sunlight or you can just pot them up once they get that good amount of roots that you want to see so it's just totally up to you now for soil for these plants they are not picky plants at all um you can totally get away with keeping these in a really poopy soil. You could go the extra mile and give them a really great medium. Um, maybe opt for like an in-between if you don't wanna to spend too much money and put in too much work for a really optimal soil. Now for pests, these plants aren't really known for being susceptible to any type of pests specifically. Of course, they can get anything. They can get spider mites, they can, spider mites, they can get aphids, they can get um, mealybugs, which I hate. They can totally get any of those, gnats, all of that, but there's not really one type that really just sticks to them or is known to be into them, which is kind of good. But the plus side is that these plants are so hardy, I will say maybe except for the moonlight, that getting rid of pests on these plants is relatively easy. Like I don't feel as stressed out if I'm hosing down the foliage because I know they'll be fine. If there's a few ripped leaves, it'll be fine. They bounce back very quickly. If I'm doing intense treatments of like neem oil or Dr. Earth treatments. Um, I know that they're gonna bounce back even if I lose a little bit of foliage. So that kind of makes it less stressful. And for potting, you can pot these up in almost any type of pot. I have them in a mix of terracotta, some in nursery pots, the harder plastic and ceramic. They, as long as they have drainage holes, I drilled some in, you don't 
have to have drainage holes if you don't want to, but it'll make your life a million times easier. Anyway, <laughs> um, they do well in any type of pot, honestly. And if you want to go the climbing route, you can most definitely do that. And I will say it's very fun. Now, this is the only one right now that I have on a moss pole. As you can see, once you get it kind of trained, it'll just start to climb on its own. Putting them on the moss pole, putting them on a moss pole, or you could use a plank of wood, which I kind of wish I'd used. Um, you can have them climbing up a wall. You can have them climbing up a trunk, which is very common. Like if you look up um climbing pothos or golden pothos climbing like in florida or hawaii they climb up get huge they get those fenestrations fenestrations that i was talking about pros to doing this is you will really increase your chances of keeping your leaf size relatively large or the same size there are some baby ones down here but all the ones <laughs> this is a terrible view all the ones up top are pretty large already outgrowing this pole so i think i'll have to get another attachment um it seems to grow very quickly and that oh yes um all of these grow pretty quickly i kind of forgot that some grow faster than others i will say my cebu my golden Nautica, the neon they all grow really quickly they will say that the shangri-la is a very slow grower unfortunately because it's one of my favorites it's hard to find and i paid a decent amount of money for a plant that's this tiny and looks like wilted spinach so i'm hoping for more growth as you can see there are a lot of types of this plant and they're pretty easy and anytime someone asks me for a recommendation for a plant for someone or themselves that doesn't really have like a green thumb um, even though I think everyone can have a green thumb. I believe that I covered everything for this plant of the week. It is definitely one of my favorites that I have. Many. If I had to pick one though, I would say the Cebu and the Shangri-La, even though it's very tiny, are like top three favorites. Those two are, I love those two. I also really love the Exotica, which explains why I have one and two and three and i have a smaller one somewhere <laughs> that's not here there's of course some that i would love to own but i don't because i can't find them without paying millions of dollars for um a small like four inch that price is really out there somewhere probably on etsy so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to comment like subscribe Next video or the second part to this episode will be out probably next week and I think it'll be super cool especially if you really want to watch more about the differences between the skin abscess and pothos. I think it's really cool <laughs> obviously since I'm making a video but anyway okay so yeah I hope you guys have a good one and thanks for watching.